Now we're going to look at color correcting and only color correcting. I'm going to open this basement image right here in Camera Raw. And we can see it's got this yellow color cast. Over here to the right, you can see you have the options of auto, all the way down through daylight, all of your color balance options and white balance options from your cameras. So it's always a good idea to try to shoot as accurate of color balance as you can. However, if you're not sure about which color balance to shoot in, then I would recommend that you pick one that's not auto. When you take pictures on auto color balance, what you're doing is your camera is every single time you take the picture, it's changing your white balance to adjust for that. If you pick one, then yes, all of your images may actually be in the wrong color balance, but you can open multiple images in Camera Raw and fix them all at the same time with the same settings. If they are all completely different or even just a little different, then you're going to have to go in and make individual adjustments on each one of those images. So I am going to select tungsten, but it's a little too cool and too green. So I'm going to adjust it just a little to get a more accurate color. And that is pretty close. So again, you can start with auto, see where that gets you if you want. And then you can make adjustments if you want to warm it up a little bit, however you see fit. Additionally, you can go in after you've done that, adjust your exposure, add in your contrast, adjust for your highlights and your shadows, bump up the clarity on this especially since it was taken downstairs in a basement. I'll bump vibrance a little, saturation maybe a little as well. Now look what happens when I start messing with the saturation. Do you see how I've messed my color up a little bit? So you want to be careful about that especially if you're shooting for something commercial or doing a commercial flyer, catalog, etc. with products in it. The color needs to be accurate. When you're done, I'm going to click Open Image. My image will open in Photoshop. Now I want to talk about levels. And levels are extremely important and very beneficial to helping you finish your images. Going to duplicate the background layer, add a levels adjustment layer. Now if it's too far over to the left or too far over to the right, it generally means we have some dark areas in our image and it may be that it's underexposed or overexposed. Now this image was taken in a basement and so it is slightly underexposed, especially up here. We don't have a lot of detail in the ceiling. So this slider to the far left allows us to adjust our shadows. The middle slider allows us to adjust our mid-tones. And the slider to the far right allows us to adjust our highlights. Now this histogram up here is essentially a visual representation of your shadows, highlights, and midtones. What's nice is with a single levels adjustment, you can fix underexposed images that need a boost in the midtones or the shadows, highlights, etc. individually. Now, I strongly encourage you to read pages 398 through 408. To learn more about levels. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to open the flag image, make general adjustments 
in Adobe Camera Raw. Paying close attention, you can see your histogram. And you're going to make adjustments. Paying close attention to your histogram up here, which is what we're working with in our levels as well. And you're going to open this image in Photoshop. So open the image when you're done. You should not have any spikes to the far left over here on the far edge on your shadows or the far right for your highlights. I'm seeing a little spike right here for black and that's because I've got this black fence right here and some dark windows. But that's the li limit of what you should see. These are not the exact settings. You need to go in and manually figure out what the settings should be based on the image and what you're seeing. Again, if I do too much, you see I get this spike on the right hand side showing I'm overexposed. If I come too far to the left, And we see that things start spiking out of control over here, and we don't want that as well. So make sure you're getting a good solid foundation because you're going to be using this for 9C to make your levels adjustments. When you're through, you're going to open the image. Now this is a horrible looking image. I'm going to go select a different one. Go back to bridge. Raw defaults, much better. I'm just going to get some general and open it. Once again, those are not the exact settings that you need. You'll need to go in and pay close attention. But I'm going to duplicate the background layer, add a levels adjustment layer. You're going to use this image for pages 405 through 408. It's looking for blacks and whites. You have that in the flag, you have that on the fence post. Gray could even be the, the statue back here. When you're through with page 408, you'll save this as 9C, your last name, underscore flag in your chapter nine folder. Now what this is going to do, 9C, will be asking for you to use the eyedroppers out of the levels adjustment layer. And so I'm going to open the barber image for you as demonstration. Click open. Duplicate my background layer. Add my levels adjustment layer. Now, what this is asking for is it wants you to use the black eyedropper, white eyedropper, and midtone eyedropper to help determine your correct exposure. So I'm going to take my white eyedropper and I'm going to click in an area that's supposed to be white. Not too bad, right? Next I'll select my black eyedropper. I'm going to select an area that would be black. And then I can select my midtone, which is usually gray, I can select somewhere in here in the window and you can click in more than one spot until you see the adjustment that you would like. Now what you're looking for, what you're looking for in a well-balanced histogram is displayed on page 399. You want a nice mountain of information down the middle of your image without any spikes on the right or left. A very slight spike like what we see here is acceptable because we have extreme darks and bright whites, but you would not want that to come over to the right or left at all. Now if I adjust my sliders way down there, it's obvious that my histogram is going to start pushing over in that direction. If I slide them all to the left, then I'm overexposing my image and you're going to see the histogram start sliding over here to the right. Neither one of those are accurate, however. 
again I can select my white and depending on which white I select look this is white here if I select that it's a little darker if I select a brighter area or if I select a darker white it brightens up the entire image so depending on correct exposure it can make a huge difference if I select something that's not white like right here then I see a color cast up here because it's going through and it's assuming that what I'm selecting on with the white eyedropper is all white. Now if your histogram looks like a comb like this histogram does here that means it's been adjusted. If it's solid that means it's an unadjusted histogram. Now whenever you go through and make the adjustments like I was doing earlier I'm putting these gaps in my histogram right here by making those adjustments. Now these numbers in the histogram are representative of your shadows, midtones, and highlights. And zero represents pure black, 255 represents pure white, and the default for midtones is set at one. So be sure to complete pages 406 through 408. Turn that in as 9C. You'll be using the flag camera raw image for that assignment.